Welcome to Hype Stories, a show about high-impact Pinoy entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs based in the Philippines who have the most disruptive ideas, go on to scale their business to a big success, and then pay it forward by helping the next generation of entrepreneurs, creating an incredibly large economic multiplier effect. Today, we're extremely fortunate to have with us in the studio, Bella Gupta de Souza, the co-founder and CEO of Edamama, the Philippines' largest parenting platform. Welcome to the show, Bella. Thank you for having me, Manny. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to maybe talk about three things. This will be a show in three chapters. Chapter one will be about the idea, right? Mm -hmm. How was the idea of Edamama born? We'll then talk about your scale-up journey. How did you go from zero to one, from one to plus, plus, plus? And then we'll end with a little discussion on this idea of paying it forward and how that actually helps an ecosystem to grow. So let's start with the idea. I, I remember that this came out of a personal pain point that you had in your life. Yes, yeah. that's right. I'd say it was a pain point and an opportunity, I guess, mm -hmm. knocking at my door at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, from a pain point perspective, I, you know, I have two children who yeah. were born in the Philippines. Uh, I've been a working mom throughout, and I, I realized as a new parent that there is no degree we get for parenting, right? As mm -hmm. they say, life doesn't come with a manual, it comes with a mother. Mm -hmm. um, but I found myself really struggling to simplify my life as a new parent. Yeah. I realized there's a lot I didn't know, mm -hmm. and I was seeking answers online, right? It was the most convenient way to, to look for products, services, yeah. information. Um, but I noticed that it was all very fragmented, and I felt very underserved. Yeah. Um, and I bet you you were finding yeah. some interesting things, but they just weren't in the Philippines, right? Yeah, not yet, at least, right? Yeah. Um, and on that note, right, the opportunity that I saw was, hey, you know, e-commerce in the Philippines is so underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the data from 2019, 2018, um, yeah. we were the smallest sized e-commerce market in the region, but yeah. the second most populated. So it was just a matter of time before that would that would sort of accelerate. Yeah. And um, I thought to myself, why not build a vertical platform focused on catering to a customer base, mothers, mm -hmm. yeah. who are truly um, the key decision makers of the household, mm -hmm. right? Espe especially in a matriarchal society like the Philippines. Yeah. So that's really where the pain point and the opportunity culminated in this light yeah. bulb moment. How did you know that that wasn't, you know, sort of a unique problem of Bella? <laughs> and that in fact, you know, there were <clears throat> thousands if not millions of other mamas in the same boat. Yeah, you know, I feel like I had some signs along the way. You know, mm. prior to doing Edamama, I ran AdSpark yeah. in the Philippines, which is a digital marketing company under the Globe brand. And mm -hmm. I remember even back then when we were working with clients, and these are, you know, big brands across different industries, yeah. the common question I would get is, how do we reach moms, right? And I think um, from that point on, I had made a mental note, hey, this is a really interesting... What, what kind of answers did you get back then? How do you reach moms? What would they say? <laughs> well, you know, AdSpark was about um, uh, leveraging Globe's assets, yeah. right? Um, and building ad solutions on top of that. So we we had access to the Globe customer database. We mm -hmm. had some insights about yeah. how many moms there were. But I think, and we were able to help brands tailor message mm -hmm. um, for that audience. But, you know, I, I remember even back then finding it so interesting that whether it was mm -hmm. an airline or a bank, mm -hmm. everybody recognized the power of the mom as yeah. the 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 CFO chief decision maker mm -hmm. of the household right yeah. and I think that when I was experiencing that pain point as as a mom myself I realized hey there's an opportunity to better serve what I would consider to be the super user of the internet and yeah. there's a lot of data to back that up right what what were some of the biggest <clears throat> um, or most memorable frustrations you had as a mom trying to source things for your growing family <clears throat> sure. Um, I think uh, there's a tendency to go to marketplaces, right, to look mm -hmm. for products. I found the whole experience to be very cluttered, very chaotic, and mm -hmm. a very search-driven process. But parenting is a discovery-driven process, right? Yeah. Your yeah. search for a product starts with a pain point or a problem or a symptom that you're trying to solve mm -hmm. for. And that's really the gap that I saw from a shopping perspective. But then that also extended to other areas like content, um, community experiences. Yeah. There's a lot of judgment on social media, on, on mom forums, and I felt those could be reimagined uh, to some extent. Yeah. And, and that's sort of what- so, I mean, are they yeah. semi-toxic 
some of these things? I wouldn't say toxic, ju- judgment but meaning. I think, you know, I think um, there's a lot of uh, people in a forum and, and not everybody has the same values. Not yeah. everybody has the same journey. And, yeah. um, you know, I felt that there was a way to maybe come up with something that felt a little bit more curated and personalized mm. to your journey and life stage as a mom. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so when we were setting out to build Edamama, we always knew that content, community, and commerce would be at the core of it. Okay. We just decided to start with commerce first because yeah. that felt like the the hardest thing to mm. solve for first. Yeah. And we said if we could at least get that out of the way, have a business model from day mm-hmm. one, then we could get into content and community in a meaningful yep. way as well, which is what we've done now. And, and when you were <clears throat> sort of playing around with this idea, did you have a sense of how big this was? I mean, well, I guess you and your husband are both MBAs, right? So you must have done the whole TAM analysis, but did it strike you, you know, immediately as being, oh my God, this is this is such a big opportunity. No one's doing this. Yeah, I, I think so, right? Um, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, the motto of our business school is change lives, change organizations, change the world. And I yeah. think we always think about impact in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely saw the opportunity, you know, going back to the point about how e-commerce was a um, high potential industry in the Philippines, just given yeah. how nascent it was. But I, I also think that as as a female founder, um, and I, I don't necessarily call myself that, mm-hmm. I, I don't like to be typecast, but I do believe that for a lot of women who start companies, there's mm-hmm. always a personal mission yeah. underpinning it. And and I think for me, it was, it was as much about the opportunity as it was about the mission to say, hey, I want to do something that okay. I truly feel is worth the opportunity cost of time with, you know, away from my children and, mm-hmm. and you know, the 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 you know the demands of, of being an entrepreneur right mm-hmm. well let's talk about the the zero to one phase of your business was that was that very challenging this was that something you you know sort of had butterflies in your stomach the whole time or was this you know sort of easy going for you <clears throat> i think cause, getting cause, started cause, uh, for, yeah. for the audience that may not be aware you build a very substantial business in globe right you built this mm-hmm. mobile ad business and you know, you, you knocked it out of the park, right? So you're used to scaling, right? Yeah. But just that zero to one phase, how was that for you? I feel that my training at Globe uh, as, an, as an entrepreneur in residence, um, building AdSpark um, with the backing of Globe was mm. a great training ground for me mm. to know that I could do it and that yeah. I could do it in the Philippine market because I had spent enough time here. Learning how, uh, learning how to uh, build a business. Mm-hmm. Um, Zero to one is always hard, though. You know, it's it's getting an idea off the ground yeah. um, and being able to stay focused, which is very hard mm-hmm. uh, because you always sort of feel like you could go in so many different directions. Yeah. But I think, and then on top of that, you had that complexity of navigating a pandemic, which no one oh saw God, coming, that's true. right? Yeah. Because we Wait, are when, a pandemic When did you officially baby. launch? May twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, my oh, role as a yeah. wife, as a mother, yeah. and then as a founder sort of all came yeah. colliding into one another when right. the pandemic started and we launched at a mama that same, oh, I think, gosh. month or a month after we went into lockdown. Yeah. Right? So that was very, very challenging because nobody knew what to yeah. expect. Right? Right. And, you know, they say, what are the three things you need to build any business, right? Capital talent market to sell into right mm-hmm. maybe we just let's let's talk about each of these three right circa 2020 so how did you find people to go and work with you in this I mean, the world was practically shut down right how, how do you get <laughs> yeah. how do you get how do you build an army when the world is shut down yeah i think it came from sort of six months prior to that um, when I was setting up Edamama, I, I really thought thought about two things. One is building a high impact business, but mm-hmm. also building a great place to work. Yeah. And I wanted to do that for myself because I knew that my priorities would still be towards my children. And I didn't yeah. want to ever feel like I would have to compromise yeah. there. And so uh, I think when we were building out the values of Edamama as a company, as mm-hmm. an employer, um, we were already talking about flexibility at the workplace even yeah. before the pandemic. Yeah. And I didn't realize it then, but I realize it now. I think it became a magnet for the mm. initial group of individuals who joined us because yeah. here we were already talking about this idea of flexibility at the workplace, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and balance with everything we were doing and bringing yeah. our authentic selves to work. 
Um, a lot of the founding members of the the company were moms themselves. So I think they were drawn mm -hmm. to the idea of being part of something where yeah. they were able to have that flexibility while working on a mission that was also close to their hearts. Cool. Money. Yes. Money during a pandemic. <laughs> how, did yeah. you, how did you find money? Yeah, you know, I, I want to spend time talking about the the difficulty of fundraising. Yeah. I think that, you know, when we read press releases, um, I, yeah. I've had so many people reach out to me and say, like, congrats and, you know, congrats on your Series A. But I think what I would rather talk about is how hard it is to yeah. get there. And I definitely struggled with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I want everyone to know that, right? It yeah. was not easy. And um, there were a couple of challenges. Number one, the Philippines at that time, pre-pandemic, yeah. Um, wasn't exactly on every VC's radar. So yeah. I found myself going into pitches, actually having to talk about the Philippines more than my business, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that was a challenge, like helping VCs overcome challenges yeah. around investing in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. No one is saying that now, yeah. right? But that was definitely a challenge. Um, and I want to talk about how we got to that initial funding, right? Mm -hmm. It was actually, I had a spreadsheet of different people I was going to reach out to talk to. Individuals, right? Individuals. Yeah many of whom never got back to me, right, yeah. uh, after a meeting. But I was at a dinner party at a friend's house, um, and I met Anthony Unjian for the first time mm -hmm. at that dinner. Yeah. I wasn't even talking to him. He overheard me talking to another friend who was at that dinner about wanting to build Edamama, and then he became my first angel check, Fantastic. right? Fantastic. And so I think luck is when opportunity meets preparation, mm -hmm. as they say, yeah. and you'll be surprised how your... Um, your angel investor can come from the most unlikely of places sometimes. Yeah. I mean, just to give our listeners a sense of the time it took, how many months from the time you said, I need money, to the time you felt, oh, I have enough, right, for the next milestone? Mm -hmm. I'd say a good six months okay. to, to nine months. Yeah. 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 Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about um, team. We talked about money. What about market? Mm -hmm. I mean, were you at what point did you feel oh, this is it's time to go to market, right? We have an MVP, we can start test driving this and get real feedback. How long did it take you to do that? So we were building for a good six to nine months before we were ready to take the platform live in March yeah. of 2020. Mm -hmm. And it was going to launch as a pure e commerce platform. We yeah. had curated about 100 brands at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. And uh, we had built in personalization features, some unique features of the platform that we knew would make us stand out mm -hmm. from from the incumbents. But that was the time that um, lockdown happened yeah. and um, we were supposed to have a launch party that never happened. Oh boy. Um, and then sort of the government had these restrictions, right, about e-commerce businesses only being able to sell essentials. Yeah. So we had to really pull back um, and uh, pivot because we uh, our, our products at the time were not necessarily classified as essentials. What, what, so what were the essentials you ended up focusing on? Diapers? Um, so, yeah, yeah, of course. Once, once, once we were able to fix the assortment, mm -hmm. yeah, it was diapers, formula, yeah. um, uh, household products, yep. even you know FMCG sort of grocery items. We we had a, we had a bunch of different things, right? We were just trying to make sure that we could um, not get in the way, um, yep. but at the same time be of service. And that would represent what roughly what percentage of the original, you know, Assortment? number of SKUs that you yeah, had? Yeah, less than half. Oh right? boy, less than half. But um, a couple of amazing things happened because of that, right? Um, because we couldn't launch the e-commerce platform right away, we mm -hmm. decided to focus on community. Mm. We said, we know for a fact that moms are going through a really rough time right yeah. now. It's a very uncertain time. Mm -hmm. Why don't we create something on social media to help them mm. navigate this uncertainty? Yeah. And so that was the creation of what now um, feels like was our launch, mm -hmm. uh, official launch in the market through this hashtag happy at home. Mm. Um, we launched that and we created uh, videos around how to how to um, navigate, um, you know, time at home yeah. with your family. And we, we created our own content, but then we worked with uh, content creators. Yeah. And then we started seeing user generated content. Yeah. And that became the first community of Edamama who then became... Yeah our customers when our e-commerce And this platform. is all done kind of guerrilla style, like, right? They're not expensive equipment, zero. not big budgets, right? This is just... No money. Yeah. No money spent on that. It was pure, organic yeah. a community development. Right? You hear that, Chelsea? No money, no budget, okay? <laughs> just like this podcast. Just like this podcast. <laughs> just like this podcast, yeah. Terrific. Now, um, 
what did you think you needed to get done before you got to your next fundraising milestone? Mm -hmm. So you did your, you know, you, you meet the fantastic angel, he introduces you to some people, you raise yeah. some money, mm -hmm. you begin to execute, then there's lockdowns, then you do community focused stuff. Yeah. What did you think you needed to accomplish before the next milestone? Yeah, I think definitely showing uh, a monetization path was mm -hmm. very important. Yeah. Um, I think that we, having gone through the experience of having pitched to VCs a little earlier in the process when it yeah. was more a concept, mm -hmm. made me quite um, made it quite clear to me, especially given the reservations about investing in the Philippines at that time, mm -hmm. was to show a really solid proof of concept, right? That there is demand, and demand is often measured by, hey, we have orders, right? Yeah. We have customers who are not just purchasing from us, but they're coming back. Mm -hmm. We had really strong repeat purchase rates. Yeah. Uh, we still do, right? It was at 50% wow. um, month on month. Mm -hmm. And so that was central to, I think, our Series A to say, hey, yeah. we've found a niche with moms. We recognize that they are, at this time, really looking to simplify um, their purchasing decisions. They don't want to leave their mm -hmm. homes, and we can deliver goods to their doorstep. Yeah. Right, and that our bets are that this is not going to wane once um, restrictions are lifted, mm -hmm. because this is a really value-added service to yeah. moms, right? To to offer them um, products that are vetted for safety, quality, yeah. and are price um, competitive to their yeah. doorstep. So you guys have grown by leaps and bounds right, in the last year, mm -hmm. right? To what would you ascribe that growth? I mean, if you could sort of pinpoint, you know, the, the one or two drivers of that growth, what would they be? An incredible team, mm -hmm. number one, um, that is very aligned to the mission, that's very execution focused, yeah. um, uh, and a great leadership team, in fact, to sort of steer this ship. Mm -hmm. uh, Edamama is so much more than just about me. It's mm -hmm. actually not as much about me as it is about our leadership team. Yeah. Right? So that's definitely one. Um, mm -hmm. And number two, our customer um, Le community of customers mm -hmm. rather yeah um we see unofficial groups now on facebook of edamom fans mm -hmm. right they call themselves edamoms nice um, and they came up with that they came up with and it that, you know that means you've arrived right when they're <laughs> taking your concept and they're turning it into their own yeah they, yeah they talk about deals they talk about you know they some of these moms these admins are like customer care an yeah. extension of our customer care team right yeah they're really advocates of the brand. Um, and so I'd say it's really that community yeah. um, and that loyalty, right? I was mentioning um, retention rates, yeah. um, repeat purchase rates are very strong. So, so, I think so a lot of word of mouth? Mm -hmm. A this? lot of word of mouth, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I think that's um, very much the case with us. I mean, we do have to spend on marketing. Please don't get me wrong there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it is a very competitive industry yeah. um, it, where, where, where we operate in terms of e-commerce now. but. Um, so much of our success, I think, is attributed to focusing on really good customer service, which has led to this word of mouth yeah. uh, virality effect. Yeah. So before we jump into uh, this whole pay it forward stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I just wanted to sort of zero in on you as Bella, the mother to two kids, you as Bella, wife, not just to your husband, Nish, but husband Nish, who's also a co-founder, mm -hmm. right, in the business with you. How do you, do you have a framework for how to manage all of these different uh, dimensions of Bella? How do you keep it all together? I, I owe so much of the growth and success of um, this business to a very strong partnership I mm -hmm. have with Nish. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we have always, when we work together, we work we bring the best out in each other. Yeah. Um, and that's true, not just work together in the sense, you know, running this business, but I think as partners, we are very, very compatible. Yeah. And I think that's partly because we're opposites. Yeah. Um, Manny, you know me, right? Uh, at a more personal level, I, I tend to be more of an introvert. My husband yeah. is very outgoing. Really? Um, <laughs> in case you haven't <laughs> noticed. Um, and I think we we have very different skill sets, but together they they work really well. Yeah. Um, they, they, they merge very well together. So I think we both um, really support each other through this. Yeah. And one of the things that I feel is sort of our secret ingredient, if you will, is that the feedback loops between us yeah. are so honest. And honestly, when you're a founder running a company mm -hmm. moving in a hundred different directions, you need yeah. that honesty. You need someone to tell you, 
like it is, right? Yeah. And I think we do that um, with each other. You know, it's interesting. I think I think this is actually a topic more people ought to maybe study mm-hmm. and, and uh, at the very least to um, to promote, right? This idea of a husband and wife or wife and husband tandem. Right? In Endeavor, out of the three women that we have, two are actually in partnership with their significant other, with their mm-hmm. husbands, right? Yep. That would be Meredith, right, and Jerome. Yep. Uh, that would be of um, a double connection, mm-hmm. and now Med Grocer, mm-hmm. and that would be Patrick and Alex Gentry, yes. right of Sprout. Mm-hmm. And uh, I go back to a conversation I once had with Ina Kyoge, right? Who used to run Avon here, mm-hmm. and now um, is at ABS-CBN, and she's a mentor at Endeavor. And I, we had asked her for her help, right, to mm-hmm. be part of what we call our Endeavor program. Mm-hmm. Like this is a program really to try to connect. Um, aspiring women entrepreneurs to more senior business executives. Right. So she said, yes, I'll do it. But, you know, I have to tell you, there's one thing I want to talk about. What's that? Well, we noticed in Avon, you know, we do these uh, these big events every year where we celebrate the uh, the best salespeople. Invariably, in the top five, there's usually two or three couples. And the way that normally works is the husband has a job, the uh, the mom wants to try to do something on the side, mm-hmm. starts doing this. It turns out to be really lucrative and then drags the husband into the relationship. <laughs> and then together yeah. they create, you know, much more income than they did previously. Mm-hmm. And so I, I do think that that is something that maybe doesn't get talked about enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you think this is a thing, right? Yeah. Husband and wife mm-hmm. um, sort of founder partnerships. Yes, I think so. Um and I joke that, you know, when you're married in the Catholic Church, you anyways can't get divorced. Right? <laughs> so so you at least know that yeah. um, no matter what, you'll be together through yeah. this, right? Through thick and thin. And So no um, need for NDAs or non-competes. <laughs> no, no, uh, no prenups either. Yeah, no prenups. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Nish's path to Edamama was very similar to what you just described, yeah. right? Um, he's actually the original... Uh, in some ways, uh, investor in the business because mm-hmm. um, we put some of our savings yeah. into this initially when we were bootstrapping. And then yeah. when it hit a certain level um, of traction, I really thought hard about um, my my gaps as a founder where I needed more help. Yeah. And I and I was thinking about, you know, who would I want to share this journey with? And I, I honestly could not have asked for anyone mm-hmm. more suited yeah. for that than than Nish, right? Yeah. As as my husband and someone I, I trust in every single way. So yeah, I, I do think there's uh, and there are a lot of great uh, examples now of, of companies around the world that yeah. are run by husband and wife yeah. couples. Who's, and who's, I, who's your favorite example of a husband um, and wife? There's Mama Earth in India. It's okay. it's a it's a an incredible D two C um, skincare mm-hmm. brand that started yeah. off actually for babies. Yeah. Um, and today is now a household mm-hmm. FMCG brand, you know, yeah. um, one of the biggest in the country mm. run by husband, wife. So, yeah, I think there are many such great examples. Yeah. Cool. Um, then let's talk about Bella the mom. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, let's talk in particular about work life balance. Right. And, you know, I'm sure people in the business community who, who, who are, you know, of my gender will sometimes assume, hey, there's certain things that Bella might not be able to do because she's such a good, dedicated mom, right? <laughs> yeah. How do, you th- how do you think about that issue? What, what, what's your uh, sort of mental model for business, family, you know, work-life balance? You know, Manny, this is the first time in my life where I would say that who I am at home, at work, and yeah. socially is the same person, right? Yeah. Because being an entrepreneur and doing edamama has allowed me to bring my authentic self to work because I'm the customer that yeah. I'm solving for. Yeah. And this is the first time I feel like all three are very congruent yeah. with, with one another. And I, I think the other thing I would say, and this is so important, right, um, is that um, mothers make excellent leaders. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying I'm an excellent leader. I'm far from it. I have a lot of areas for improvement. Um, it gets very stressful for me at times too. I do have mom guilt, no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, a lot of imposter syndrome at times too. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact that we've built a culture in the company because there's so many moms in our leadership team. Yeah. I think it just means that we bring um, a different type of leadership mm-hmm. to the table, which 
um, is incredible. Like we are forced to learn multitasking the yeah. minute we give birth, mm -hmm. right? We're always juggling. We understand how to be empathetic, how to listen, mm -hmm. because this is these are things our children demand of us, right? So I, I really see it as an asset, and I um, it also means that how I've thought about work life balance is like I don't want to work on weekends because yeah. I um, I really. Uh, don't see my kids a lot Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. Right, they're also busy with their yeah. lives. But yeah. weekend is family time, and at Edamama, Mama, our Slack channel is quiet on weekends. We uh, really respect people's time outside of work, and whether you're a parent or not, right? We want everybody to feel know that their life outside of work is very important, mm -hmm. and it, it's important to honor that. Well, if I had a, a glass of beer or wine, I would say, "Here's a toast to all the mothers out there." My mom, <laughs> Minnie, yes. my wife, right, who go through such great lengths to take care of everyone else, mm -hmm. which yeah. I think is a natural segue for the final piece, mm -hmm. which is this this concept, which is very important to endeavor of mm -hmm. paying it forward, mm -hmm. right? So there's something very, you might say, motherly about that concept, right? It's about making mm -hmm. sure the others are taken care of, right? Which yeah. is always my observation, always the instinct, right, of, of good mothers, right? Is everyone else okay? And uh, our theory of change at Endeavor is very much about paying it forward, mm -hmm. right? We think that to grow in an ecosystem that is abuzz with activity, you need a few, literally a handful mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs that actually invest their success in the next generation, mm -hmm. right? That they invest their money, their time, their talent, their networks in others. Um, what what do you see happening here in this ecosystem, right? Is, is the pay it forward ethos alive and well? Mm. You know, I, I recently saw Ron Hose's um, post on Startup about asking that question, right? How has how has Coins.ph um, impacted others in the ecosystem? And it was yeah. incredibly inspiring to see his his web of impact, right? Yeah. And I, I I can only hope that it, you know I get I can come a fraction uh, as close to that in mm -hmm. terms of paying it forward. Um, I think that it's so incredibly important, uh, and it's easy for us because we are in a space where um, the pandemic has also shown us, as a company, the dark side of yeah. parenting right now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of families in dire distress, right? Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of instances of moms reaching out to us to explain how they don't have enough money to even put food on the table, right, and asking us for help, right? And yeah. we do help where we can. Um, we partner with. Um, whenever we do big campaigns, um, we had an expo a couple of weekends ago. We partner with foundations mm -hmm. so that um, any it's live on our site now too. Please check it out. Yeah. We have a collaboration right now with Rohe Foundation, and we ask. How our, do you spell the foundation? R O H E I. E I. Rohe okay. Foundation. Um, we ask our customers at checkout to actually mm. donate. Um, nice. It and you can donate products. Yeah. Right. So if you're buying diapers for your child. Why not donate a packet to nonprofits in this country who are doing great work to help a lot of families in distress? Mm -hmm. um, so I think we try to do what we can um, with the the resources that we have. Yeah. Um, personally, for me, um, if I can inspire more women to mm -hmm. come forward and trust themselves yeah. to start companies, um, you know, with or without um, fa their children, uh, them being mm -hmm. moms, right? I think. In general, I, I believe so much in this idea that moms make excellent leaders. Yes. And uh, if I can do my part in in sort of you're doing it light now, right? I'm hoping people listening to this podcast, <laughs> right, that you get inspired. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm so, sure, I'm sure this, this, you know, at some level in your company itself, you as a leader are sharing your knowledge, sharing your way of you know doing things mm -hmm. to the uh, to the next generation, right? Yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you think about your leadership team? I mean, what we say in Endeavor is the social contract we want is you as an entrepreneur will help you, but you need to multiply yourself mm -hmm. by ten, mm -hmm. right? By you know by working with younger, uh, less formed entrepreneurs. I mean, is that is that something that you think about in your own company? Inside? I think, um, firstly, for the women who are mothers in leadership positions at Edamama, yeah. they are really, I think, setting a right example mm -hmm. um, within the company. None of us work on the weekends, right? Yeah. None yeah. of us are contradicting each other yeah. in terms of saying, hey, you know, 
we're going to do things differently. I think we all share these values, yeah. right? So I think that helps a lot. But we have a lot of young people, um, young leaders in the company who are not parents. They just love their moms, yeah. um, and they love the mission, and yeah. um, they make you know they 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 bring their own um, um, uh, strengths to the sure. table. So. Um, you know, and, as you're saying yeah. this, I'm, I'm thinking of a really great company that I admire, which is uh, Patagonia. Yeah. And Yvonne Schwinar and how he's so true to his values. Right. right? And a lot of it is about Incredible. giving people, you know, the time and the space to be human beings. Right? Yeah. But obviously, when you're at work, you are operating to an incredibly high standard, right, mm -hmm. of excellence. Because mm -hmm. I think he's like a product zen yeah. craftsman, right? right? It has to be perfect. Yeah. It has to last for 100 years. Yeah. Right? But at the same time, right, he has a book called Let My People Surf, mm -hmm. right? Which is all about, hey, you know what? If the surf's up at 3 or 4 p.m., you know, it doesn't make sense to say you can go surfing, but, you know, you go home and it's 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Go and surf and then come back and do some more work. Yeah. Right? And it's, yeah. it's, it's being... Um, yeah. I think very holistic mm -hmm. about human beings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I love your message. I love that. It's it's um it's something to take note of, mm -hmm. I think. Bella Gupta de Souza. And uh we look forward to the continued um big mamaization <laughs> and mama. And um Thank you know, you. we we look forward to seeing you um scale the next summit in your journey. And there you have it, folks. That was Bella Gupta de Souza, the founder and CEO of Edamama, the Philippines' number one parenting platform. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you'd like to connect with us, you can reach us at hello at endeavor.org.ph and you can catch us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. This show was produced by Endeavor Philippines. I'm Manny Ayala, and you've been listening to Hype Stories, High Impact Pinoy Entrepreneurs. We'd like to thank the Asbury for our studio. The Asbury is a private members club in Poblacion where the creative and cerebral live in the moment and work, gather, grow for tomorrow. To know more, come find them at asbury.club. Again, that's asbury, A-S-T-B-U-R-Y dot club. Thank you again to our friends from the Asbury.